I want to share a, a story with you that I've, uh, I don't think I've shared this before. When I first came to this country, uh, I came as a student. So uh, that was in uh, 2003. And uh, I, I only brought $900 uh, pounds. And um, I was struggling to keep up with my expenses because I came as a student for my master's and uh, I had to make sure I find a job and I had to pay the rent and uh, I had to keep up with my expenses. It was very, very tight and it was very, very stressful. But within the first three weeks, uh, I managed to find a job. Thanks to my uh, experiences back in Sri Lanka, I was working as a front office uh, receptionist uh, before I came to uh, England. Well, I worked as a reservation assistant at Taj Samudra, one of the best uh, hotels in Sri Lanka, a five star. Before that, I was a, a receptionist at Mount Ravinia Hotel, it's a five star. I was a receptionist uh, in Earth Regency Hotel, five star. So I had a lot of experience. So, however, I went to this interview and uh, the first questions, well, they asked two questions. It was a, a walk-in interview. So it was a lot of people coming in and uh, the HR, there was a HR desk, they asked two questions. The first question was, uh, do you have a bank account? And I'm, uh, I'm like, okay, yes. And uh, the second question they asked was, uh, do you have a NI number? that stands for national insurance number. You need to have a national insurance number to work in the UK. I said, yes, but uh, I actually didn't have any of those. I didn't, I did have a bank account in Sri Lanka, but that's not what they referred to. I didn't have a bank, uh, national insurance number, but at the time, if you didn't have a national insurance number, they, uh, they provided you with a, a uh, temporary number which is T uh, N and your date of birth and ends with a M if you're male and F if you're female. So that was a made up number that people used when until they got a national insurance number. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use this if they ask for the number, but they didn't ask. So I was qualified in the first uh, desk and I was put through to the front office uh, manager for interviewing me and uh, Apparently, he's been to the Mount Lavinia Hotel in Sri Lanka. And when he asked about my experience and uh, at Mount Lavinia, he was very impressed. He said, OK, this is good. Uh, he was a German uh, guy. I can't remember. Patrick uh, Freffer, I think it was his, his name was. He said that this is really good. I'm going to take you from uh, when can you start? I said, uh, I can start even tomorrow. And uh, he was like, OK, you start from Monday. And he gave me a supervisory job at uh, Britannia International Hotel. It was a five-star hotel, it still is, uh, in Canary Wharf in London uh, with 442 bedrooms. I managed to get the job and uh, because I was a student, they later found out that I could only work 20 hours and uh, the supervisory role was only for full-timers. So they came back saying, oh, you know, you can't work uh, full time. I'm like, yes, I know, but uh, I didn't say I can work full time. I'll work part time using, uh, but I will, I would still like to be a supervisor. And then they said, okay, that's fine. We'll give you the job. And uh, yeah, I got paid uh, a decent amount <laughs> during that time. That was uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, it was more than 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, that's, that was my first job and it was uh, a good experience. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes you have to have the confidence to say certain things and go through some tough situations. It's not like I couldn't get an NI number. It wasn't like I was an illegal immigrant. Uh, it wasn't like I couldn't get a, a bank account opened. And at the time, for you to open a bank account, you had to have a job. For you to have a job, you had to have a bank account. It was just impossible unless you uh, uh, go through that somehow. So that's what I did. And these kind of things will help you guys when it comes to a sales um, question, sales 
conversion, sales call. Sometimes they will ask for certain things. Oh, do you do this kind of service? Maybe you don't do it, but you can say, yes, we do that and start doing it. So it's how you adapt to the environment. It's the way you adapt to the scenario and uh, deal with it and move forward in a positive way. So I hope you got something out of this. Uh, so it's not sometimes it's not uh, because the HR didn't know my qualifications. If I if I couldn't go through the HR, I would never be able to get that job within the three weeks and I would struggle because I didn't have enough money. But because I went through the HR somehow, I managed to speak to the right person and then convert that person to buy in to me, as in recruit me. So it's the same way. Sometimes you have some people uh, uh, on the switchboard or answering the calls saying, okay, I need to speak to the person in charge of this. And they'll be like, oh, he's not, in, uh, he's not available. Uh, you can't speak to him, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you need to uh, tell a small lie to get through that because it's just a lot of uh, resistance because people don't like to speak to uh, salespeople. So try to go through that resistance. And once you go through, when you speak to that person, it becomes so much easier because whatever you're selling, if it's valuable, they need to have it. So as long as you can convince them, because you're not trying to convince the switchboard operator, you're not trying to sell the operator anything. So get through them. Once you get through them, you speak to the right person and then you can easily convert. So remember this on a sales call, sometimes you have to, uh, you have to tell a small lie, but it doesn't mean that you are lying to the clients. It doesn't mean that you are losing the credibility. It's just to get through that. But if you tell them, if you tell the client that you're doing certain services, provide them. I'm not asking you to lie because if I say, okay, I'm going to build you a landing page, I will build a landing page or two even. I would over deliver. But sometimes you have to come up with something. Oh, yes, it's not there. But uh, rather than saying, oh, it's not there. Yes, it's there. I will. If it's not there, I will make sure I'll include that. So put certain things in to close the sale because sometimes you have to listen to what they're saying and you need to include what they need, not what you just have. We have uh, uh, a lot of sales calls where um, clients come in and say, I need a, a website, I need a landing page, I need this, I need that, I need you to focus on my Instagram, nothing else. Okay, you'll do that but we will do others as well. So make sure you listen to what they are saying and provide them with what they need and get the results. That's how we did it and that's how we succeeded. There's a long way to go. I'm not saying we are on top, but uh, it's a long way to go, but we will be there, I promise you. And uh, you can get there too. Take care, God bless you.